Hey sunshine, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. I'm coping. It's really crazy times right now, what we're all going through. I go through phases of feeling super anxious about everything and then feeling so hopeful and grateful for the sense of community this has brought to the world. We're all affected by this. And while we're indoors, Mother Earth is healing. And that's also a pretty cool silver lining to come out of this. Though things seem kind of scary right now, I'm doing my level best to focus on the good. I also want to say thank you to everyone who is still working. Obviously to the medical professionals and our grocery store workers and sanitation workers and food and grocery delivery people. We're all true heroes and society would be in a terrible state without you. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'm also so sorry to people who have lost their jobs either temporarily or otherwise during this time. I hope that the systems put in place do their job to support you and that this is over soon so we can get back to normal. I understand that working or studying from home isn't an option for everyone and that it's definitely a privilege, but I also know it's what a lot of us are having to do right now. Over the past week, I've been taking any time that I'm not working to try to set my environment to sorts. It personally helps with my anxiety to have a clean and organized space to exist within, so I'll be showing you some of that while I talk about my tips for staying productive and focused while working from home. Tip number one is to wake up at the same time every day. Does it need to be as early as it was when you were going to work every day? Absolutely not. I assume you likely had some amount of time where you were commuting to your job or school before, so now you could either take that time and put it into the sleeping bank or add it to your morning routine for a slower paced wake up buffer. It's up to you, but keep it consistent. With a mostly regular sleeping schedule, your body will get better rest, which means a healthier, better rested mind and also a healthier body that's able to fight off sickness. Tip number two is to change your clothes. It doesn't need to be a formal work outfit or uniform that you might have worn before, but it does need to be different from what you slept in. Changing your clothes should trigger the thought that you're changing activities. Pajamas equal sleeping and jeans and t-shirt equal work or whatever your new work attire you decide on. Tip number three is to have a morning routine or ritual. This can be as short or as long as you want it to be and include whatever steps make you feel the best. If you absolutely love painting your face but hate doing your hair, then set aside time to put on some nice makeup and throw your hair in a low ponytail. If you absolutely hate wearing makeup but live for a 45 step skincare routine, then do that. I put out a morning routine video a couple weeks ago, and of course, now it has shifted slightly, but I try to hit the main points. I work out every morning, which is sometimes a workout video online or some yoga at home. I shower, I get dressed, do my skincare, throw my hair in a ponytail, and then make coffee. If it's a filming day, I'll spend a bit of extra time doing my hair and makeup. Your routine should be flexible and reflect what makes you feel the best. And I think the important thing is just to choose one specific habit that you always do at the end of your routine so you trigger the next sequence of actions, which is to start work. So for me, it's making coffee. I know that my morning routine is done and that it's time to sit down and work when my coffee is ready. For you, that could be getting dressed or making your breakfast or after you let your dog out. Just make sure that that one thing is the last thing you do before you start work so that it triggers the transition. I do need to take a moment to recognize my newest patron, Marlene. Welcome to the team, Marlene. I'm super grateful for your support. I understand that money is tight for a lot of people right now, so if you can't support creators at this time, it's okay. My Patreon is linked below and has lots of fun wallpapers and printables to download if you want them, but it'll all still be here when the world writes itself again, so don't stress. Tip number four is to designate a distinct work area. If you already have a desk, that's awesome. You just need to set it up for success. If this is also the desk where you chill and watch Netflix or relax in the evenings, then you're going to want to change something about it visually while it's your work desk. So say you have a lot of cute tchotchkes on your desk, maybe remove some or all of them when it's work time so you get the visual clue that you're in work mode, and then you can replace them when you want to relax at your desk later. Maybe it means swapping out your chair or switching to your work calendar, or maybe even sliding your computer to the other end of your desk. Just change something so that your brain won't associate it with relaxing time. And for people who don't have a desk and have only a couch or bed situation to work on, same rules apply. Sit sideways on your bed or change the decor around your couch. Tip number five is to get rid of distractions. This one is pretty basic, but super important. If you can, leave your phone in another room. If you can't stand to be so far away from it, at the very least, silence it, turn off Vibrate 2, and flip it upside down. 
My phone is actually always on silent and I never have vibrate on either, so I'm super trained to look at it as soon as it lights up. So flipping it upside down means I need to be more conscious about when I'm picking it up to check it. If you're able to, based on the nature of your work, turn off Wi-Fi. If you do need to use the internet to work, try to minimize your tabs to just what you need for work and close Facebook. You definitely don't want that beeping at you all day while you're trying to focus. I'm very bad at this one and sometimes check my phone too often, so I try to make a rule for myself that I can only answer messages if I am up and walking around my house, not sitting at my desk. Because we designated that a work area in our last point, right? So sometimes I will get up and pace around and answer messages, which means I'm at least stretching my legs. And sometimes I realize I'm too lazy to get up, so I don't end up checking my messages at all until later. Tip number six is to organize your tasks. You can do this in so many different ways. If you know me, you know I use a bullet journal for most things, but I also use iCal to organize the hours of my day while the bullet journal holds my to-do lists and events. You could have a random notepad or journal next to your desk where you keep to-do lists, or you could use an app on your phone to keep things organized, or use Google Sheets or iCal, or write it on your arm with non-toxic ink, however works best for you. In the morning, you wanna dump everything in your brain onto the paper, even non-work-related things if they're taking up brain space. So say you need to get the laundry done, do the dishes, answer all your emails, finish up the essay or project you were working on, you wanted to catch up on Doctor Who, and you have an online meeting with your boss. You write all of that down so you don't need to remember it anymore. It's on the paper now, not in your brain, so your brain has space to breathe and think about the actual work. You can then go and sort these tasks into themed lists, like one for housework, one for work work, and one for fun. Organize it how you like. But now when you inevitably get distracted, because despite our best efforts, it will likely happen, you can refer to your list and remember what you were meant to be working on. It also works as a great way to productively procrastinate. So sometimes you burn out working on one task. Say you spent all morning trying to chug out the rest of this essay and your brain feels like mush. Well then take a productive break and do the dishes and get the laundry started. You're still doing things on your priority list while also giving your brain a second to rest. Now you can get back to work after feeling like you've done something useful and hopefully also feeling a bit refreshed. For me, this often means after hours of editing a video, I'll stop to take and edit some photos for Instagram or for thumbnails, which is still actively working, but also feels a bit like a break because I find it fun. Tip number seven is to set an end time or something to look forward to. If you have an online chat system that connects you to your company that's expecting you to be online at certain hours, then this might be easier for you. Once you see your boss go offline, you're basically off the hook. For me, I am my boss, and I actually struggle a lot with learning when it's time to quit. I enjoy what I do, so sometimes my work just bleeds into my leisure time because I find it fun. But I also burn myself out this way. If you're like me, you'll definitely want to try to set a solid end time to your day, or better yet, give yourself something to look forward to. Like setting a time to chat with your friend online, or deciding that at 7pm you're finally going to catch up on Doctor Who. Work will often take the amount of time available to finish. So if you just don't stop working until 9 p.m., it will take you until 9 p.m. to finish whatever you're working on. But if you set that friend date for 5 p.m., you're gonna finish your work by 5 p.m. I need to learn this one myself. I should really listen to my own advice. In a way, I'm lucky that I get to work from home because it's something to keep me busy. If you are one of those people who is stuck at home and doesn't have work to distract you, here's a few other things to do, besides the obvious of binging Netflix or online gaming. Create something, draw, paint, sculpt, draw digitally, write, make a comic. You could clean or organize your space, redecorate your space. You could try new outfit combinations or new makeup looks or hair because no one's going to see you anyway, so it doesn't matter if you mess up. Support people as best you can. Send people messages to say you love them and ask how they're doing. Discover a new YouTube channel. Organize and update your digital spaces. I need to do this one myself actually. I themed all my devices for the fall and haven't changed them since because I still prefer a good Halloween aesthetic even when it's full on holidays and winter time, but now I feel it definitely needs a spring pick-me-up. Also, relax. Don't feel like you need to learn three new languages and create a masterpiece and write a novel and alphabetize your book collection. You are well within your right to sit down and exist for a while. The whole world is on pause. If you're able to, you can relax. And if you're like me, that in and of itself sounds scary and impossible. But here, not that you need it, but in case you wanted to hear it, I give you permission. You are allowed and it is okay to want to take a second to breathe and just be. This is yet another moment when I should probably take my own advice. 
Lastly, I just want to say thanks to all of you. I took a chance over the past year to follow my dreams and try to build my little empire here on the interwebs. And it's truly a blessing, now more than ever, that I already had systems in place to work from home. The world is a bit scary right now, and my anxiety voices are getting real loud up in here, but you're the reason I keep getting up in the morning and trying to make things. I love the idea that maybe I could bring a bit of light into someone's day when they're feeling anxious like me. So yeah, I love you. Be safe, be well. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.